Building an autocross car can be complicated, especially if it's a 79-04 Mustang. There's no shortage of aftermarket companies vying for your dollars, and no shortage of Mustang enthusiasts offering their two cents. There's a lot of information overload. If only there was a simple, proven recipe to follow to get your Mustang ready to attack the cones. Actually, there is. Ford already built a car that's a perfect guide for how to make your 79-04 Mustang into an autocross car. And they did it 35 years ago. The 1984-1986 Mustang SVO. Die-hard Ford fans are familiar with these cars, but I meet a lot of people who've never heard of them. The SVO was Ford's attempt to build a European Mustang in the mid-80s. By European, Ford meant a car that handled well. The SVO had all sorts of forward-thinking mods that raised the bar, but they also raised the price. An SVO cost nearly $5,000 more than a GT. American buyers longing for the return of muscle cars after the anemic Mustang IIs of the 1970s just didn't get the SVO. A pricey European Mustang? Americans didn't want to drive Prince Charles. They wanted to drive Chuck Norris. So only 9,844 SVOs were ever sold. And while that low number might seem like a failure, the SVO is widely considered to be the best handling Fox body ever made. I've been fortunate enough to drive an SVO, and while I haven't gotten one out on an autocross course yet, I can tell you that Ford got it right when they built this unicorn. It feels balanced, responsive, nimble, and willing. This video covers the mods that make the SVO essentially a factory-built cam-class autocross car, and it shows why the theory behind this rare pony should be the basis of your 79-04 Mustang autocross build. The biggest mod was making the engine smaller. The 2.3-liter intercooled turbo four-cylinder was lighter than the V8 and produced nearly the same amount of power. Its compact size meant less weight over the front axle, and the design kept that weight closer to the firewall. Using the turbo four-cylinder gave the SVO a weight distribution of 56.6 to 43.4, compared to 58 to 42 for a GT. Mass centralization is always good for handling. The SVO weighs 2,992 pounds, about 140 pounds less than a GT, but it feels like a completely different car. When you're building an autocross car, weight and weight distribution have a huge effect on handling. There are tons of products out there that can shave weight off the front end of a Mustang. And remember, just because your car has to meet a minimum weight and cam, doesn't mean you can't move that weight around to use it to your advantage. The SVO came from the factory with Kony adjustable shocks and struts. Shock settings influence oversteer, understeer, braking, and composure when you're weaving through the course. Being able to adjust your shocks and struts allows for dramatic changes to the personality of your car. Ford went with slightly stiffer springs in the SVO, but they didn't lower the car. That gave the suspension room to move before bottoming out, and allowed for less body roll, less dive under braking, and kept the car more poised during high-speed cornering. And because the SVO was all about cornering, Ford installed a larger front sway bar than a GT, 1.12 inches, and it used a 0.67 inch rear sway bar when most four-cylinder Mustangs didn't even come with a rear sway bar. The larger sway bars in the lighter SVO helped keep the car flatter in the turns and more predictable during rapid changes of direction. The SVO suspension mods address the specific needs of a car that will see more curves than straightaways, adjustable dampening, stiffer springs that don't lower the car to the ground, and sway bars that work in unison with the other suspension upgrades. When you're thinking about what suspension mods will turn your pony into a corner carver, take a cue from the parts Ford prioritized. SVOs also came with upgraded brakes. Up front, the calipers had 73mm pistons, much larger than the 60mm pistons on the GTs. 
but the rear brakes saw an even bigger improvement, discs instead of drums. In fact, there wouldn't be another Fox body Mustang with rear discs until the 1993 Cobra. Ford understood that better balanced braking creates more confident braking, and more effective braking allows for less braking. That means more time on the gas. The SVO is a big reason why Ford focused on improving the brakes on Fox SN95 and New Edge Cobras and Cobra Rs. And it proves that relatively simple brake upgrades can make a dramatic difference in stopping power. The SVO came with a 7.5 inch traction lock rear end with 345 rear gears in 1984 and 373 rear gears from 85 to 86. That was a big step up from the 273 and optional 308 rear gears in other Mustangs of the era. A lower rear gear, higher numerically, acts as a torque multiplier. Because the four cylinder didn't have much torque down low, the rear gears helped it get off the line faster, into boost faster, and they allowed the car to accelerate faster. Once it's in boost, the SVO is very responsive to throttle inputs. The gearing helps the car feel like the power is right there when you need it. Ford chose a rear gear ratio that played into the strengths of the engine, and that's exactly what you need to consider when building your autocross car. The SVO came with 16 by 7 inch rims wrapped in 225 50 16 tires. The rims were an inch taller than the GTs and the tires had a slightly lower profile. Less sidewall equals more steering response. Ford understood that going with a more performance oriented rim and tire size would allow drivers to capitalize on the improved suspension. And that's a great lesson for people prepping their autocross cars. Think about how rim and tire size interacts with the other mods you've made. As the SVO evolved, Ford fitted a 15 to 1 close ratio steering rack to further improve the steering response. Most later model Fox SN95 and New Edge Mustangs came with a 15 to 1 ratio rack. But the basic idea of improving steering response in a car meant to take on twists and turns can be applied to areas other than the steering rack internals. Suspension bushings, steering rack bushings, K-member and strut tower braces, and caster and camber adjustments will all help. Ford equipped the SVO with a Hurst short throw shifter. Factory shifters have a long throw, a long handle, and they tend to feel a bit like you're stirring oatmeal with a wooden spoon when they get old. In the SVO, you feel better connected to the transmission. 99% of the time, you're only going to shift once during an autocross run. But a short, positive-feeling shift reduces the risk of missing a gear, especially if you're shifting right before a turn. The stock shifter in your 79-04 Mustang is anywhere from 15 to 40 years old. It's a good idea to put a short throw shifter on the list of mods for your autocross car. The SVO seats are made by Lear. They have bigger bolsters to keep you in place during cornering. They have a sporty, European, plugged-in feel. The only 79-04 Mustang that came with better seats was the 2000 Cobra R. To be clear, you absolutely don't need to swap out your factory seats to start autocrossing. But as you get faster, you'll realize the stock 79-04 seats aren't ideal for keeping you planted as you toss the car around on course. The improved steering rack, shifter, and seats all combine to create comfort and confidence as you push the car to the limit. Autocross runs fly by in a matter of seconds. Any delayed steering response, missed shift, or sliding around in your seat will cost you time. The SVO was built to be driven hard, and it was outfitted to make the driver feel as connected to the car as possible. And when you drive one, you're reminded of the unbelievable potential of these cars. The whine of the turbo spooling, that magnificent, just slightly faster than you expect pull of the torque, the confident click of the shifter grabbing another gear, the immediate steering response as you accelerate through a corner, the perfect balance as you transition to the next turn. You just know exactly what Ford built this car to do. 
It's a shame more SVOs weren't built. It was a car ahead of its time, and sadly, lost to time, except for those of us that love Mustangs. It's more than just a unicorn. It's Ford's factory-built cam car, a textbook we can study to create our own uniquely capable Mustangs. The engineers looked at a Mustang and thought, what can we do to turn a rowdy muscle car into a refined sports car? And if you follow their recipe, you can do the same thing.